Hey, it's Wes. And today, we're taking a look at the very cutest little autofocus lens for E-mount. It is the TT Artisan 27 2.8. Now, it looks about this big when you pull it out of the package. This being the package here. But, on the back here is a rather large cap. We'll talk about that more later. And here is our lens. Ooh, that is very small. It is a crop sensor lens, and it's just a 2.8, so there are reasons for it being this small. But can it perform well while being this tiny? Let's find out. Starting with, as always, the build quality. We have some metal, some plastic. It feels pretty good in the hand. Incredibly light, obviously. The fit and finish does seem very nice. Let's check out this aperture ring. It is permanently clicked, which is fine by me. Our lens cap is very tiny, a little bit finicky. I feel like I'm going to lose this someday. And we have a teeny tiny lens hood that reminds me a little bit of some old Zeiss designs. And that just screws on here like this. Yeah, not much to see there. And lens cap on top. Starts to look a little bit goofy when you do that. It has an interesting little dual attachment design on here, so it works with or without the lens hood. I mostly just don't use the hood because it doesn't do a whole lot. Overall, build quality, I'm gonna give that a 7.5 out of 10. Not bad. Handling and usability, and here, the winds are obvious. This thing is so small, you basically don't even notice that it's on your camera. So light that it has very little effect on that. I find my camera hangs kind of oddly because it's not balanced by a lens as it normally would be. There is no AFMF switch, there is no custom function button. Where would it go if there was one? <laughs> it can be at times a little hard to snap onto your camera without making some changes here. The detent from auto to f16 is not any stronger than any of the other stops, so that moves pretty easily, but aside from smacking it onto your camera, this aperture ring is so far back and so f close to the body, you're not gonna hit it uh, accidentally. This manual focus ring feels fantastic in the hand. Surprisingly smooth for such a small cheap lens. The focusing is all focused by wire as most automatic focus lenses are these days. And let's get to this. This is our back cap, which is also a USB-C port for firmware updates. And so you just put this on your lens and you plug that into your computer. TT Artisan says that it supports only Windows, but this is a common issue with Mac computers. They don't like low grade connections. And so if you just did a C to C full data connection, it's not gonna work on most modern M1 computers, Apple Silicon, but if you adapt it to a USB A port and back in, I know this is ridiculous, it works just fine. And it's just one, another one of those drag and drop things, firmware update is easy as pie. And so right now I think I'm on 2.02. .02. So overall, handling and usability, I have to give this a 9 out of 10. This is just a pleasure to have on your camera. But is it a pleasure to use? Because next we have image quality. And that's where we would expect a lens like this that is very small and compact at an aggressive price point to take a hit, does it? Well. It's not incredibly sharp wide open, and wide open is only 2.8. But once you stop it down, it is quite usable. It is arguably usable wide open. There is tons of chromatic aberration, especially wide open. It still kind of sticks around when you stop it down. There is a lot of vignetting, and surprisingly, when you stop it down, the vignetting still doesn't really go away. You can add, a, they do provide profiles for that, but you are gonna get some uh, image degradation around the corners, especially wide open, because that is aggressive vignetting. The flare resistance is surprisingly good. It, it is way better than I thought it would be. It's funny because when I get a low cost lens like this, I'm expecting to have fun with lens flares and things like that. And this one didn't really oblige me that, <laughs> which is a plus and a minus. 
It's a plus in this category though. Color reproduction is good, but not great. Sometimes you get some funny casts, although I do really enjoy the way that it renders blues, which is not something I've said about a lens before. When you take a picture outside with the blue sky and so forth, it looks lovely and there is a surprising amount of pop with this lens when you shoot it wide open, which I never would have expected for 27 2.8. Honestly, I was expecting the image quality to be a lot better than it is. Now, I'm not saying it's terrible, but uh, TT Artisan's past manual focus lenses, like the 51 2, 35-1-2, they have been amazing <laughs> for image quality. So I'm a little bit confused here because this is good, but not amazing like those ones. I really wish they had made an autofocus lens with the same optical quality as, as a lot of their manual focus lenses. So I'm a little perplexed on that point. But overall, this is not a precision <laughs> lens for commercial work. I've got to give this a 6.5 out of 10 for image quality. Image character. As I said, I was expecting this to be able to be a little crazier, but it's much more subdued than I expected. And since you are at a 27 2.8, you're not going to get a lot of bokeh. If we take a closer look at the bokeh in our cat's eye test of the cat's eyes, you'll see that there is cat's eyeing pretty much the whole way through the field, wide open. The cat's eyeing barely stops once you reach the middle of the lens, but the bokeh itself, which you'll be hard pressed to see, is a lot of fringing, a fair amount of onion ringing. That being said, when using the lens, actually in practice, it can get a little bit nervous, but usually not. And I find that something unique about the character of the fall off does give it, again, a fair amount of pop. The flares can sometimes be nice, they're mostly uninteresting, but overall this is not really a banger character lens. I would say it has a vaguely vintage -y quality to it, so if you're kind of into a classic street photography vibe, this would be a great lens for that. So for image character, I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. Focus performance. This is an autofocus lens, but one caveat, like a lot of third-party autofocus lenses, the autofocus points generally only work within the rule of thirds center third. Actually, it's one ninth of the frame, but the center box. So if you have your rule of thirds lines turned on in your camera, it's mostly just going to be within the center that that's going to work and just outside of that. When you're inside that zone, it works great. It even works great in low light. Not the best but honestly very usable i used it in a very dark wedding reception took some great dance photos and as long as i kept my focus point within that box it was fine now i'm not even talking about cropping beyond that point as this actually does give quite a bit wider than an APS-C crop. Again, you've got lots of vignetting, which sure is fine in some circumstances. So much of the time that I used this, I actually used it in full frame mode and then cropped it myself on my 33 megapixel a7 IV. I got closer to 20, 22 megapixels instead of going all the way down to like 12 or 13, which the default APS-C crop gives. So it's kind of shocking how much of an image circle this teeny tiny little thing provides, but it does give you more than APS-C if you're okay with some heavy vignetting. And with party and dance photography, that's A-OK. -okay for me. And when you switch this to manual focus, it is sharp enough at all apertures to support focus peaking. And because it is a lens with contacts on it, it does also support the automatic manual focus assist features inside the camera. So that's great too. So for focus performance, it's a little slow, doesn't get the edges. I gotta give this a 6 out of 10 value and that's where we're expecting to do well here let's compare for value this comes in at 150 dollars for an autofocus lens now tt artisan has a 25 f2 for 55 dollars they're always just banger for value let's compare we have a tamron 24 2.8 it is better image quality no doubt 250 dollars a lot more money samyang 24 2.8 400 dollars there is a sony crop sensor 30mm 3.5 macro for $300. Sigma has a crop 31.4, a lot wider after $340. Uh, there's a Viltrox 28 1.8 for $380. There's a Sony 28 F2 for $450. Anyway, everything costs a lot more than this lens. <laughs> The value of this is 10 out of 10, and that excuses most of the other marks for this. 
So that gives us a total score of 75.8%. Let's bring it up on the West score spreadsheet here. There it is, we are around the middle of the pack, 75.8%. Which is a tie with the Viltrox 51.8. Very interesting. Not a phenomenal score, but as I said before, there is a very clear place in the market for this lens. We're looking at approximately a 40 millimeter F2 full frame equivalent on this which is a fairly normal street photography focal length. And especially if you like a classic look, this lens is perfect for you. It is small, it is subtle, it is cheap. You're not gonna get robbed on the street for this lens. You're gonna look like you're using a point and shoot even if you have a really nice camera on you. If that's what you want, this lens is for you. If you wanna pick one up, there are links down in the description below. If you have any questions about this lens, hit me up in the comments, I'll get back to you. Until next time, Let's go take some photos.